Um, now to come to these equations, um, the magnetic relaxation equations or the MRE to their friends. So here we have the frozen field equation for the magnetic field B, uh, which is a divergence free vector field. Um, and there's a relationship between uh, B and U. And here is the following um, um, possibility for a relationship um, where U is given in terms of B. Here it is the following form. Um, and what do we need in this rela relationship? Well, we're basically wanting to, uh, under the evolution of this system, we want to drive U to zero. So we end up with a, mag a, mag a field magnetic field B that is um, an unequilibrium for oil or, or magnetostatic. Um, and note, of course, with this constitutive law relating U and B, when we plug it in here, we've got a cubic nonlinearity uh, in B, which makes the problem a little bit complicated. Um, and uh, well, this is one relation we could choose as our constitutive law, but um, it would also be possible to choose a constitutive law where we're actually introducing a certain amount of regularization. So we introduce um, minus the Laplacian to some power gamma um, here, which then regularizes our constitutive law um, relating U and B, but still the system is going to preserve the topology of the initial conditions because we've, what we're working with here is the frozen field equation. So now um, what has been done with this problem? Well, um, let's make a, a few observations that one are known to uh, going back to Moffat and some other people who've considered the MRE equations. First of all, let's take the magnetic energy estimate. So pair the um, frozen field equation with B, integrate over space. And for our, um, for our discussion in terms of the analysis, we're working in uh, the, the D-dimensional torus. Um, and D, for our most purposes of interest, is three or possibly two, um, but uh, D is the dimension of our physical space. Uh, so here is the magnetic field, uh, uh, magnetic energy estimate. Um, and again, using the divergence three properties of U and B, we can re rewrite this when we uh, replace um, uh, our relationship between uh, uh, U and B, we can rewrite it in the following form. So we see almost immediately that the energy, the magnetic energy in our system is strictly decreasing providing U itself is not identically zero. Um, so the dissipative nature of the equations that we are considering um, is immediate and important. Um, so magnetic energy is strictly, strictly decreasing unless of course we've got no, we've, we have gone to the limit where U is identically equal to zero. Um, and now the system also has a global lower bound um, which is sometimes referred to as Arnold's inequality, um, that the uh, L2 norm, square of the L2 norm of, of B is bounded from below by this quantity that is referred to as the topological, um, or the rather the magnetic helicity. So the magnetic helicity is defined here um, uh, as the dot, the scalar product of a vector field A and B, where A is the inverse curl of B. And um, the notion, one notion of topologically non-trivial flows is that this magnetic helicity is non-zero. So if the initial condition is topologically non-trivial, according to this um, definition of non-triviality, um, then we've got a positive lower bound on the L2 uh, norm of the magnetic field B for all time. So, so the, this MRE equation appears to be a, a promising equation in terms of describing the relaxation uh, procedure that we're looking for. We were given an initial flow which could have very complicated topology, and we would like to drive it under the MRE equations uh, to uh, an Euler or magnetic, magnetostatic equilibria field. 
Can we do that? Um, well, in terms of analysis of this system, uh, Jan Brenier um, in 2014 considered the MRE equations in two dimensions um, without the regularization of possibility. So this parameter gamma for, for Jan um, was set to equal zero. Um, and he defined the notion of admissible dissipative solutions satisfying that satisfy the energy inequality for the MRE equations uh, in, as I say, in two dimensions. Um, and ignoring the, condition, the um, problem of local well posedness, he proved uniqueness of smooth solutions among all dissipative solutions for any given prescribed initial uh, conditions on B. Um, then what are we what have we contributed to this MRE equation? Well, recently, um, together with uh, um, uh, Biki and Vikal, um, we published a paper um, with the following results uh, concerning the MRE equations um, with the possibility of this uh, gamma, um, which is our sort of regularization that has been introduced um, that does not disturb the, uh, the fact that the we we're considering um, a system that will preserve the topology of the initial conditions. So our first result is local existence in Sobolev spaces um, for all values of the regularization parameter gamma. Um, and here is the statement of our local existence. Um, so uh, we start off with a divergence-free um, initial condition in HS then there is a time t star such that the MRE equation has a unique solution B with associated velocity U um, and the, um, the H dot S norm of B is bounded um, and the energy equality is satisfied up to this time t star. So we have at least local existence um, with and without the regularization parameter gamma. Um, then we have a result for global existence, but for global existence, we need the regularization parameter gamma, and it needs to be bigger than the usual d over two plus one. Um, so you know, remember, uh, the topology is preserved independent of gamma being there or not there. So as far as the, um, the really sort of the major, major reason for considering MRE, we're in good shape. So global existence in the following sense, um, so for all uh, gamma and S greater than D over two plus one and initial conditions divergence free in HS, um, our time T star goes to infinity. And we have um, a bound on the um, HS norm of B, the following bound in terms of a term that will inv be involving um, our uh, exponential behavior um, in powers of t to the half. Um, and the proof of this is, um, follows via showing that the Lipschitz norm of u uh, is integrable in time and the Lipschitz norm of the magnetic field B is square integrable in time. Furthermore, um, we have convergence under these same conditions of the theorem as t goes to infinity, Again, we need regularization. Gamma has to be bigger than d over two plus one. Uh, we have the asymptotic behavior for the, the velocity that we're looking for, so that uh, under these conditions, the zero mean velocity u associated with v um, has the property that as t goes to infinity, the L infinity norm of the gradient of u does in fact go to zero, which is what we're looking for. However, it is still open. Is this decay fast enough to ensure that the L infinity norm of the gradient of U is in an L1? So we're going to zero, but is it going to zero fast enough? And that is a result that we don't have at the moment. Um, and so this means that it's open. Does B, the magnetic field, and that's the whole sort of meat of the matter, does B itself converge to some uh, uh, vector field B bar, if it does converge to something, that something is an Euler equilibria, but um, it is, we, at the moment, we cannot prove um, that, it, that 
we've got a something. We may it may just jump around um, uh, uh, infinitely often rather than converge um, as we would like it to, and so we're guaranteed an Euler equilibria with the same topology. And if I have time at the end, I'll show a few um, numerics which uh, indicate this convergence is a subtle matter. Um, so now, what can we what can we prove? Um, well, going in some sense from the, um, the, the wonders of uh, the complexity of topology to an exceedingly simple initial condition, namely a constant vector field. Um, so we choose our initial condition on the magnetic field is just a constant vector field in one direction. Um, and for this, U is obviously zero. Um, and we don't actually need in this very, in this special case of uh, the regularization so we'll set gamma equals zero, and we study the two-dimensional stability under the MRE equations of this very, very special steady state. So plug this perturbation of this uh, very special initial condition uh, into our um, MRE equations, and out comes the following system. Um, so now this is for a two-dimensional perturbation, this flow, this, um, Obviously, the initial condition lives in three dimensions, but we're considering a two-dimensional perturbation from the MRE equations. And we end up with the following system um, for this perturbation now. And one thing that we immediately see is, well, we have a sort of preferential direction, which isn't surprising because we've got a preferential direction of our constant and uh, original uh, state. Um, and the different, the sort of, the diffusivity in our equation, the MRE equation, is sitting here rather nicely as the second derivative of on B with a minus sign. Good. Um, however, we are different. This second derivative here is only in one direction, namely the direction um, of our initial steady state. Um, so although we have a dis an obvious dissipative role in our equation, this will vanish on functions that are independent of the variable x1. Um, so to handle that in our analysis of this system, um, we use a, um, a met method um, that Tarek Elgindi El recently applied to a different two-dimensional problem, um, namely stability of um, uh, the, uh, uh, an equation coming from the porous media equation. Um, with this, with, which had the same um, uh, feature of uh, diff diffusivity, but only for functions that were um, uh, dependent on a certain parameter. So what we do is we project onto the X1 independent and X1 dependent components of this vector field B. And uh, the, the result that we get is we prove both stability and relaxation of the MRA equations with this very, very special um, uh, steady state that we're perturbing about. Um, so we proved that there exists a unique global in time solution um, for our perturbations V and V. The total velocity goes to zero as T goes to infinity. The total magnetic field goes to uh, a, a small perturbation of our initial um, constant magnetic field. So we are relaxing to a steady state V bar which, which is um, a, an order of epsilon away from our initial condition um, uh, with the initial condition being uh, order epsilon itself. And both convergences take place with respect to strong topologies. So yes, we do have relaxation and stability working exactly as we'd like for this very, very special uh, situation. So now what can we, what can we say when we're no longer in this very special situation. Well, one thing that we can say is um, that there is um, a whole class of um, uh, solutions, exact solutions to our MRE equation, which are analogous to these well-known, so considered two and a half solutions um, to, to the Euler equations. And from um, my point of view, uh, the first, presentation of these two and a half dimensional um, exact solution for Euler appeared in the papers of Viktor Yudovich in um, 1974. Um, there have been a number of other papers 
observing this exact solution to Euler. Um, and it's, say, it's a two and a half dimensional solution. The, in the Euler case, the velocity is written uh, in the following form, a part that depends only on the horizontal um, variable um, in the horizontal component and is, is, is an equilibria itself. And then a part in the vertical, um, which depends on the horizontal uh, component of, the, of space and time. And providing G satisfies this equation, which is uh, a transport equation, um, we have a solution, uh, exact solution to the Euler equation um, of the following form, which is where um, it doesn't grow, it, the velocity field U does not grow in time. However, um, the curl of U, the L infinity curl of U grows linearly in time. So we have, have a, 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 an instability, but an instability in the curl. And as I say, this is well known. And what we'll, um, we noticed is that there is an, an analogous exact solution for the 3D MR, um, 3D uh, MRE equation. No, why is that popped up? Okay, so the exact solution has the same form. Um, we're now considering the MRE equation. The magnetic field B has this form again. Um, the horizontal part, V here is itself a steady state solution of the 2D MRE equation. And then this vertical component uh, is a function of the horizontal component uh, of the horizontal uh, uh, spatial variable and time. And, and with this for B, U from the constitutive law that relates U and B will have the following form zero, zero, and a component in the vertical direction of the following type. Uh, so uh, now what is the equation for G? The equation for G that will ensure that this is an exact solution to the 3D MRE equation, the equation for G is the following form. So instead of having the transport equation that, that, obtain, uh, that appears in the uh, two and a half dimensional solutions of Euler, we have this equation, which is a rank one diffusion equation. A diffusion equation is what we want. We're looking for this diffusive process of relaxation that will take us to, uh, well, as t goes to infinity, will take us to u equals zero and recover a steady state solution of, um, uh, of uh, for b. So now, if we put in a particular example for our uh, 2D horizontal flow, namely shear flow of this sort, well, then our equation our rank one diffusion equation has the following form. So here is a shear flow profile, capital V, function of the variable X2. And if we choose um, G to have this um, rather obvious form, um, plugging it into this equation, we can write down the solution uh, G as a function of X1, X2, and a T. We can write it down explicitly in the following fashion. So we see that um, uh, G, uh, will go to zero as t goes to infinity, because here we have exponential of a minus something times t. Um, and furthermore, since g goes to zero, b is going to go to uh, the horizontal velocity field, uh, horizontal equilibria that we started with. So that's nice. Um, but if we now consider um, the, the values of um, the grade of terms that involve the gradients of B, um, for it, in this case, here is a specific example. So our, um, our initial condition, again, simple initial condition um, involves a sinusoidal um, 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 vector field components. Um, and the U zero then, is determined from the relationship between U0 and B0 that we've chosen um, will have this field of the following form. We can calculate in this case explicitly uh, G of X1, X2 and T it looks like this. So we can calculate explicitly the derivatives of G, which mean we've got the derivatives of the B3 component uh, of our vector field. And we've got it completely explicitly now as functions of T X, uh, X1 and X2. So we can compute the norms 
And in particular, if we computed the L2 norms, uh, as we've done here, of the second derivative of B3, we find that um, as T goes to infinity, we actually have the norm, these L2 norms are growing. This one grows like T to the quarter, and this one grows like T to the half. So although this particular example gives us relaxation to um, an, a very well-defined object B bar in weak topologies such as L2, we have actually instability, nonlinear instability, because this is an exact solution of our nonlinear equation in a stronger topology that involves derivatives, for example, H1. So um, we also consider um, a slightly more complicated variant. Again, uh, consider hyperbolic flows. So hyperbolic flows um, with singularities at a hyperbolic point. Um, so again, steady state solution of the 2D um, MRE equation, um, the perpendicular gradient of the uh, function given by sine x1, sine x2. So hyperbolic flow. Um, and very annoying. Um, so now in this case, well, G satisfies the, the equation that I was describing, um, this uh, um, uh, diff basically a diffusion equation rather than a transport equation. Um, we've got existence and uniqueness for our MRE equation. Uh, thanks to <laughs> my uh, this paper, uh, groundbreaking paper of uh, Avon and Marsden. Um, so we know we've got an existence and uniqueness um, for this hyperbolic flow um, in our G equation. Um, and the MRE solution can be calculated um, in, and we can uh, obtain a bound for G, which itself is going to give us a bound for um, uh, the, magnet, the gradient of the magnetic field. Um, and uh, so we see that we have an MRE example that can actually, ex with this upper and lower bound, um, that can actually exhibit exponential growth in the gradients. So we have um, no growth in the B equation, uh, in the uh, B function itself, but we can have exponential growth in the gradients even. So, so clearly with these very special exact solutions, um, we are dealing with um, a PDE in the MRE that has um, very tricky features to it. Um, so together with um, Adam Larius, uh, Vlad um, and I have been exploring the possibility of some numerical simulations of the MRE equations, um, which proved to be tough, um, <laughs> very tough, I think. Um, <laughs> so here um, are an illustration of um, a numerical simulation. In this case, this is the simulation of that cellu cellular flow with a hyperbolic point um, that, it, that uh, comes from uh, the, the perpendicular gradient of sine x1, sine x2. So this is um, what we are perturbing about in the exact solution I was describing for our two and a half dimensional exact solutions of the MRE. And you can see what well, we've got this a uh, cellular pattern as to be expected. And um, we are perturbing, oh, no, what's happened to it? Um, yes, so we are turbing, perturbing this uh, cellular pattern with an, an initial perturbation. And the initial perturbation is uh, um, a velocity field in um, one, di one horizontal direction and um, a, a, a sinusoidal velocity field. So. So now um, this, this is um, our flow pattern um, uh, at a time in our uh, um, numerical simulation, um, 2.5 seconds in our numeric scale, in our time scale of our numerical simulation. Um, so, so this cellular pattern um, under the evolution of the MRE as we, we can see it is preserved as expected. And here, when we're looking at the 
Mm, why does this keep popping up? Um, we're looking at the gradient of G. Um, we see we, we're, we're getting, as we expect we might get, um, current sheets. So current sheets, um, which are uh, permissible, as we've seen from the analysis of this, this uh, example, um, uh, current sheets are, are being produced um, in a simulation. Um, the, uh, the, the value of the L2 norm of G is growing, um, as again, we are expecting to happen. We've seen that growth is possible in our um, the analysis of our situation. Um, the um, the uh, L2 norm, so the L2 norm of the gradient is growing, but the L2 norm of G itself is decaying again, as uh, we hope or um, our analysis predicts should happen. Um, and the L infinity norm of G uh, decays um, and then shoots up, which again is once again, we're expecting to happen because of the instability, this uh, instability that is possible in our um, uh, basically the gradients that are of our vector field. The energy spectrum goes a bit wild, but stays under control. So our uh, picture is um, consistent with the analysis we have of that particular example. Um, however, when we went to, um, to look at not the explicit uh, exact solution that we know for 3D uh, MRE, we went back to actually look at, at trying numerics on the MRE itself, um, then things were not at all so nice. So numerics on the MRE um, basically go wild very quickly, or at least they go wild very quickly within the, uh, the scale of resolution that we can use um, for the, uh, uh, the system as it's running. Um, and so we, we lose resolution, um, at least uh, for the length of time uh, that the um, program has been run up to now, um, we lose resolution rather, uh, rather strongly um, as the energy spectrum indicates. So a much finer um, uh, numerics need to be done um, and uh, for, for uh, a longer time to have any hope of, um, of actually simulating um, even 2D MRE, which again is not so surprising because um, we are, as we have gathered from our analysis, we are dealing with a very tricky problem. Um, so a few concluding comments. Well, the MRE is a very challenging and unusual uh, PDE. It's an active vector equation. So most, um, the most uh, active um, uh, uh, equations with con constitutive laws coming from uh, a physical problem uh, have been uh, analyzed in, in the situation of active scalar equations. Um, an active vector equation is definitely um, a more um, a demanding object. Um, and in fact, in this particular active vector equation, we've got a cubic nonlinearity. So there are the, the, the problem um, can be set up to do what we would like in terms of relaxation, relaxation um, uh, driving an initial vector field um, with complicated, possibly complicated topology to um, a steady state solution of Euler magnetostatic. Um, it, uh, but uh, the, the representation that we're using to do this relaxation process um, involves this very challenging MRE equation. Um, so there are many open questions in terms of analysis. Um, for example, um, viewed as a problem, and a, an, an analytic problem in PDE. Um, if we don't have regularization or if we don't have enough regularization, do we have global existence? Um, we, we, we've proved global existence with enough regularization, um, but even then we, don't, we have not um, proved 
that um, we will have, a, um, that in the limit as t goes to infinity, um, we will go to an object B bar that is well enough defined to be called um, an, uh, an Euler equilibrium. Um, our special two and a half dimensional solutions show that at least generically, we cannot expect magnetic relaxation um, with respect to strong norms. Um, maybe yes, with respect to weak norms, as we've seen in our exact solutions, uh, but not with respect to strong norms in general. Um, and then what is the asymptotic structure if we can reach B bar um, when the initial field is chaotic? Um, let's say a Beltrami flow. Can we, can we con make any conclusions about that? So there is a lot to do, um, but I hope maybe um, people have a feeling as to why this MRE equation um, is an interesting equation and a challenging equation from the point of view of uh, topological fluid dynamics. So thank you very much for your kind invitation um, and happy birthday, David. Um, and uh, thank David for all his magnificent contributions um, to PDEs and fluid dynamics. Um, and thank the organizers again for the invitation to this workshop. Hi, hi Susan, thank you for the very nice talk. Um, I was wondering, probably you've already thought about this, but um, this rank one diffusion equation that you have, um, you could think of uh, sort of an analog of what you're doing for 3D uh, or you know, 3D steady state solution for 2D Euler using that equation, just making it an active scalar equation, taking V to be uh, the BS of R of uh, G. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, then presumably for the same reason, you would settle on steady states and the topology of the scalar function, which is V dot gradient G initially is preserved. Mm -hmm. so it's a sort of similar setting, but now it's quadratic, but scalar. Yeah. And I just wonder if there's something that can be said about that. Uh, so going backwards, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. backwards from, yes, but, but um, uh, uh, well, um, Yes, uh, so the difference from the uh, Yudovich um, example for Euler equations um, uh, is significant in yeah. the sense that here we've got a diffusion equation, but I have the feeling that what's going to happen is everything goes to zero. But I, if, I guess it should settle on V dot gradient G being zero, like any Euler equilibrium is a stationary point of yes. that equation. Yes, yes. So you could, so, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, but um, these 2D Euler equilibria, um, we could take, yes, as you say, we could take any, um, but I'm not quite sure how that equation is going to um, recover anything new i mean it's it, it it's going to drive you to the 3d euler or the 2d euler equilibria that you chose you've chosen here um but i guess i'm thinking about a case where you don't start with an equilibrium but you perturb it and yes. you want to see some topology change of the streamline in the limit yes so yes something with a analog of a current sheet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so, so I think that there's... Um, I understand. That's an interesting thought. Mm -hmm. There's a, just one other remark. So there's a... a I was told about this from uh, Sasha Schneerman. So he has a student who had a, a thesis where he studied um, the analog of this relaxation problem for in two dimensions where you start nearby the sine X, sine Y stationary state. And that stationary state is like a saddle, right? So it's a extreme, it's a critical point of the energy, but it's not, a, but it's a saddle. And you perturb it a little bit. And what you see is a relaxation. If you, if you try to minimize the energy now, the Dirichlet energy, now you, it's not a dynamical thing, really. You're just trying to minimize. It's a variational minimization. And you see that the critical point of the saddle splits 
into it's I guess it's called an XY transition. So it splits into a vortex sheet connecting two regions. And mm -hmm. so maybe this, maybe this equation that you have written there could be some dynamical way to access that type of splitting. I don't know. Um, yes, I'm not sure, but it, it's certainly an interesting thought. And actually, I think Sasha sent me um, some information about the student's thesis, okay. which I looked at but couldn't really understand too well. Um, but it would, be in, it would be very interesting to talk to Sasha about it, um, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, I had I had one question about um, I think it was on slide fourteen, uh, mm -hmm. just one after this. Okay. Uh, yeah, it just it I'm, I'm misunderstanding something because it it looks like that exponential decay term, like exp of minus epsilon squared sine. Yes. That should be winning, right, and decaying the whole that, thing. That and yet, on the other hand, be, it, that should be winning. But um, when you calculate. Um, the well, in this case, the second derivative, um, you get a t here. Mm -hmm. So, so now, um, for this particular expression, one just computes the L two norms. So this is the x one x two norm, and this is, um, uh, and then this is the L two the L infinity norm. One can just compute them explicitly, right. and out will come a term, basically from this t that in the case of this norm is going to be one over t to the quarter in the case of this norm, one over t to the half. So is, is this related to the, the fact that just at those points where sine x equals zero, you think those are gonna be, you have very little effect, but they tend to be you know, actually yes. dominant as, as we see in yes. say hyperbolic yes, exactly points of steady flows? The specific values of x1 and x2 okay. it, for, the, for the derivatives. That have pulled out a t. So it's it's it, again it's a little somewhat similar to the Euler example, where again um, these the the velocity field u um, decays or actually doesn't grow. But um, if you take a derivative, so you could take the curl, there will be a t pulled out um, coming from the exact solution. Only here our exact solution is somewhat different, but again, has a T here. And when we look at specific values of X1 and X2, um, these norms can be calculated uh, and give us the growth. So, so this is shear flow. Um, and in the example with the, the hyperbolic points, um, then in fact, the, um, uh, we have we get we compute a bound and that bound actually uh, as you see we've got an even exponential growth coming from the um, the, the hyperbolic trajectories in this uh, underlying horizontal flow. So so even in these relatively simple exact um, expressions for solutions of of uh, 3D MRE, um, we have features um, that, are, that are definitely showing us, well, current sheets in the um, MHD context, which is not too surprising. 